So harnessing the power of low code in model driven apps is the title session. Um, so just a quick intro to uh, who I am. My name is Josh Giles. I'm a solution architect at a company called Bridgel based up in Scotland. I'm also Scotland based uh, in the central belt. I also organize the Scottish Power Platform user group. Um, check it out if you haven't or you haven't heard of it before. It's a great um, a great community. Um, we run um, sessions um, mostly monthly, in person and virtual. Uh, my background's in M365, so infrastructure and SharePoint. Uh, I also own a blog. Uh, again, check that out with the QR code below. Uh, I try to blog about interesting, cool things and just general things that kind of catch me out from time to time, uh, which hopefully can help someone else as well. And also connect with me on LinkedIn too, uh, if you want to have a chat or just um, generally talk about anything. So um, to kick start with harnessing low code and model driven apps, I want to kick over custom pages. And custom pages are pretty cool. And and just before I actually get into this, I want to say I'm a massive fan of model driven apps. I'm, I'm constantly shouting off the rooftops about them. Um, anyone that knows me knows that I talk about them probably a bit too much, um, but I think they're great. But also acknowledge they've got some limitations and, and this is the whole point of this is just to kind of show that we can work with that and kind of overcome them. And the first one I want to showcase are custom pages. So what are custom pages? They're effectively canvas apps in a model driven app. Um, they give us that kind of pixel perfect um, customization. You know, we can drag and drop make things um, responsive, you know, customize it to our heart's content, really. We can also use record context. If I've got a model driven uh, record, I select it, I can then use that context in my custom page as well. I can pass multiple records as well. So if I've got a grid um, of records, I can pass all of that record context into a custom page too, uh, and use it in something like a gallery, for example. I really like them for landing pages. Again, model-driven apps aren't necessarily the most um, beautiful looking things. Um, so having a nice landing page where we can actually um, just kind of add a little bit of um, pizzazz, if you will, into them is is great. So uh, something I'm finding myself doing more and more. And the look and feel as well. So just to kind of move on to the next slide on that, um, look and feel is really important um, with this um, due to model driven apps being obviously something that's given to us out of the box in a certain way. So we want to almost match how a model driven app looks in our custom page and templating the design of that is something that I've considered pretty um, important to do. So um, I've got like a, you know, a library where I can just basically import a custom page, be it a form or, or a, a table type view and, and start working on it to, to customize it how I want. With the introduction of the, the kind of copy and paste of YAML that's come in recently, um, although it's in preview, it, it makes it even easier because now we're just copying the code rather than having to worry about anything else. Um, and yeah, you know, we want to match that existing look and feel that we'll, with what we've got in the model driven app. So what's next? Modern commanding is the other one I want to talk about. So we've known about buttons in model driven apps for a while. You know, we've been able to use things like ribbon workbench or for those of us that uh, maybe want to be a bit more extreme, you know, we can directly edit the XML files. I'm not one of them, but I'm sure some of you are. Um, you know, modern command and just simplifies the whole thing. It allows us to create, you know, drag and drop buttons effectively onto the ribbon and create actions on them um, with PowerFX. So that's great. So we can now actually leverage PowerFX with these buttons um, to kind of deal with the on select and the visible rules. Where things get a little bit more complex, JavaScript can still kind of reign supreme there. But for you know patching or you know controlling visibility based on context of a record or something like that, they're they're great. So you know I feel they're quite a good kind of introduction into customization in a model driven app. Um, JavaScript can you know be a bit more complex, and if you don't come from a pro code background, then you know this is a this is the perfect choice. 
Um, so some small tips here that I wanted to include um, that we might not be aware of. So we can actually open custom pages um, using the modern commanding and PowerFX. Um, you know, it's mainly just for opening the page up in line. If you want something like a side pane or a dialogue, you still need to use JavaScript. But if you want to open up a custom page uh, in line and with record context, you can do that with PowerFX. And you know, for things like button visibility, use PowerFX as well, uh, unless it gets a bit, bit more complex. Then again, you know, JavaScript reigns supreme there. But you can combine the two where needed, um, so you can get the best of both worlds. So the final one I wanted to talk about was low-code plugins. These are still in preview, but these are pretty awesome in what they can do. Effectively, for those of you that know what a plugin is, that's um, traditionally C-sharp coding to you know do server-side actions. Low-code plugins takes away that C-sharp requirement. So if you're not you know a, a pro-code developer like myself, you know we can now harness low code instead which is great i can use power effects do what i want and it's going to execute server side and be very performant we've got instant and automated options so we can actually call these um you know through a flow or um, directly within a canvas app but we can also actually call these on um you know say if a record gets created or deleted it will execute as well and they can be done pre or post operation. This is one of my favorite things about low code plugins in that, you know, I can actually call them to do something um, before it's basically visible on the screen. So a common one is if I'm creating a contact uh, in Dataverse and I want to use a full name, you know, and I put in the first name and the last name, it will actually appear more or less straight away on the saving of that record because it's done um, pre operation, which is great. And if we're using instant plugins, they can be fed inputs and give outputs as well. So what that means is I can give my plugin something to process and you know it's going to give us a result as well. So they're great for that too. We can leverage integrations into plugins as well. We've got access to the connector library, so all of those connectors um, that we, we know and love with Empower Apps. I think it's what, over 1,400 now we can we can leverage um, within low-code plugins. Streamlines the logic handling as a result, again, using that PowerFX um, capability. And we can integrate it with AI as well. So you know we can feed it um, AI prompts and stuff, and it will give us the output of that. So that works really well. Um, so just to kind of finish this off, um, I want to quickly show a quick demo of some of these um, before we get into the summary. So if we look at a custom page, this is uh, an example I've created in the past where it's just more or less a template of what a custom page can look like. You know, I can just effectively lift and shift this for any requirements that I now have. It's very straightforward in how, it's, how it works. It's responsive. Uh, one thing to note, I do use a creator kit components, although my kind of dependency on that's being kind of um, a bit less and less now with the introduction of modern controls uh, and things becoming a bit more in parity with what the creator kit was originally trying to achieve. Um, on to the modern commanding. So yeah, this is obviously the, the modern commanding interface where I can just effectively create a new command button and add one to the, the ribbon, uh, give it a name, uh, an icon if I want. And, you know, it's, it's all basically click, click, click straight through what I want to do. And then for some reason this is broken. I, I don't know if anyone else is having this. It had fixed itself, but I've seen this in the past where I can actually select um, to select uh, PowerFX here, but there is usually an option to um, select PowerFX and then I can use the um, PowerFX um, that we know and love up here. But if I want to run JavaScript, I can do that as well. And the same for the visibility, there would be an option there for, for PowerFX. And then lastly, um, what local plugins look like. And again, this is in preview, and I know it's changing a little bit, but um, I can then come into the Dataverse Accelerator app and create an instant automated plugin here. Um, you know, I can give it a name, specify the table I want to create a, a plugin for, and give it 
like expression there. What's quite cool about this um, for the eagle eyed view use there is that this is actually using a custom page as well. So it gives you a bit of an indication of some of the capabilities that we can that we can kind of harness within um, custom pages and, and low code and model driven apps. So just to come back to my slide deck and just give a bit of a summary. Um, yeah, harnessing low code and model driven apps, it gives us more choice um, when we're developing. You know, we don't want to be as limited as we maybe have been in the past. You know, we, we all know we've got things like you know, business rules, business process flows within model driven apps. This just gives us another kind of feather on our cap to use. Um, we can overcome those technical barriers quicker because we don't need to actually resort to pro code methods all the time now. Uh, you know, if you if you come from a pro code background, then great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't, then the low code options there now, and it makes it a bit more simple. And yeah, less complex as a result because I'm not having to leverage things like C sharp or JavaScript as frequently. And yeah, just to summarise uh, on all of that, you know, combining both of them is really powerful as well. Um, and we can we can do more with both um, when we use them together. And that's it from me. I just want to say thank you. And yeah, please connect with me on LinkedIn or check out my blog. Mm -hmm.